Hi, a slightly different video today. Given the DIY nature of the channel, I want to see if I can put a coat of wax on my snowboard myself and sharpen the edge. There's a few tutorials online on how to do that, but what I can offer is a great money saving tip in terms of how you melt the wax for people like me who don't do this very often. But it's pretty cold outside, so let's get inside and make it happen. Before we begin, there's a couple of things I want to take care of. First, I don't want any wax on my carpet, so I'm using a piece of cardboard for protection. And second, I want to secure my snowboard in place. In a workshop, they would use special vices for the task, but I'm using a couple of F-clamps. And I'm sure you could think of a dozen of other ways. Yes, this will do just fine. I'll start with tuning the edges. And you want to do that first, because otherwise, if you do the wax first, you run a risk of scratching a newly coated snowboard. As you can see, I prepared myself some tissue paper, water, and a set of diamond stones. You could easily get away owning one file, but having a set offers a little bit of flexibility. The files I have range from 250 grit, that's for when you have burrs, rolled edges, through 360, for finer imperfections, to 500, and 1000, for when you only want to clean the edges or sharpen them. My board has never seen snow before, so the edges are fine. They're just not sharp enough for my liking. And there's a couple of spots that the diamond stone will take care of. So I'll be using the finest from the ones I have. I'm dipping the file in the water, as lubrication arguably helps float away the metal debris, and so you get a smoother finish. There are specialized sharpening tools available, and you can find an example in the video description. But the diamond stone offers a cost-effective solution, which fits your pocket, and it doesn't take much practice at all. For the side, you just press it flat and run along the edge. I'm doing this twice because I barely apply any pressure, but you need to be careful though. The metal you take away, you'll never get it back. It's a good idea to wipe the metal dust off your edge. It's fairly unpleasant if you get it into your skin. And the color shows that you don't need to grind to achieve a desired result. Now, it's not enough just to tune the edge approaching from the side. You need to do it from the flat side too. So what you do, you put your diamond stone over the edge and tip it ever so slightly. The more you tip, the further away the actual edge from the ground will end up being. And this is useful for the beginners. On the other hand, if you want to have more control at high speeds and in the turns, you need to keep the file much flatter. Now to keep the angle constant along the entire edge, I press the file against my thumb. And when I run it along the edge, I keep my thumb on a snowboard. So the angle depends on how far away the diamond stone is fixed from the tip of my thumb. And for my needs, I'll hold it something like this. feels nice and sharp now. Next, let's move on to the waxing. But before we begin, we need to clean the surface. And as I said, it's a new snowboard, so I just need to wipe it clean with a soft cloth. Otherwise, the old layer of wax should be removed. And for the absolute majority of snowboarders, a wax remover would do the trick. The exception being just the racers, who prepare their surface slightly differently. On to the supplies. And I bought a basic kit which includes a block of wax, a scraper, a couple of structuring pads, sometimes there's a nylon brush, but mine didn't come to one, and there's a block of cork. The wax I've got melts in under 120 degrees Celsius. It's rationed, so it should last for a few, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Okay, moving on. There's a scraper, which is used to scrape the excess wax. They've included a couple of structuring pads, the red one being more coarse and the gray one finer. 
Both of them making a difference between a slow and a fast snowboard, and so does the cork. In terms of melting the wax, there's a couple of options. There's an orthodox way of buying a specialized iron, but they're not too cheap. Again, you can find an example in the video description. The second option is using a conventional household iron. But for me, someone who's gonna wax his snowboard at most once a year, but more likely every two or three years, neither of the options work. You need to understand that once you use your iron for waxing, it can no longer be used with your clothes. And I don't want to look for storage for an appliance I'm barely gonna use. So the money and storage saving tip I mentioned earlier is using aluminum foil. So the idea is to wrap the foil around the base of your iron. Since it's metal, it will heat up and you'll be able to melt the wax. But your iron will remain clean. So let's try and do that. Oh, and don't worry about creasing. It will make no difference. What you should focus on instead is tucking the foil around the edges securely, so it doesn't come loose when you move the iron around. This will do. Just a word of caution. See, my iron is set to steam. That's a bad idea. You want it to set it to no steam. And just to be on the safe side, I removed all the water from the container. So now I've got my iron plugged in. The temperature is set to medium to low, and I can always increase it if need be. It's always a good idea to start on the low side. The wax I've got will melt between 100 and 120 degrees Celsius. But the melting point of some other types is 140 degrees Celsius. The problem is that at around 150 degrees, you start damaging your board. So there is a very thin margin for error. With the iron hot enough, all you need to do is hold the block of wax against it and let the wax drip. You want to spread the wax across the entire board, but again, start on the lesser side, you can always add more. And now you need to melt the wax and distribute it somewhat evenly. Be careful not to linger on in one spot for too long, not to damage your board, but it's important to take it slow. The purpose of this step is to massage the wax into the base material. Some people say that the material has pores as if a human skin, and even though there is no real evidence to support this, i.e. the pores cannot be seen even through the electron microscope, the wax does penetrate the surface. It can be observed embedded into the surface material at close inspection of cross sections of snowboards. The wax will also fill all the scratches, so take your time, it's important not to miss a spot. Once you're satisfied, you'll need to wait for the wax to cool down. That's at least an hour or so before you can start scraping. So the scraper I've got is just a piece of acrylic. Seems like 5 millimeters in width or so. Now in terms of the way you hold the scraper, I've seen different advice. The one that's most common and makes most sense is leaning into the direction you're gonna scrape, some 60 degrees or so. But I've also seen a couple of people suggesting going the other way. But it doesn't make any sense to me. Think of it as a sharp knife. If you drag it along this way, it does scrape, but does it safely. If however you swap it around, you catch all the imperfections and cause damage. Mind that the scraper is harder than the base, so it's a damage to your board. Finally, I've seen a guy holding the scraper like this and going back and forth. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Let's just stick to the first method. So let's do this, but I'll go outside, I don't want to make a mess here. I'll push the scraper away from me, because that requires less energy than any other way. And I'm only applying a light pressure, as I don't want to damage my board. Also note that I'm only going lengthwise. The scraper creates microscopic grooves, and you want them to work with you, not against you. Think of the bottom of a plastic sledge. Something I did not expect is for the wax to stick to the scraper so much, so I have to clean it off constantly. It does take a few minutes, but you're not making yourself any favors, leaving patches of excess wax, 
so be patient. As an absolute minimum you can stop here, but if you want to separate yourself from the people who carry their snowboards through the flat bits and glide past them, you need to structure your base. You can do this by going up and down with a soft nylon brush, or as I'm gonna show you today, with structuring pads and a block of cork. There's different ways you can do this, but I'll show you my favorite one. So I'll start with a red pad and leave a grate for last. In between, I'll rub the board with a cork. So it's pad, cork, pad. Again, the red one is the rougher of the two, so that's why I'm starting with it. As before, you want to go up and down the board. And not sideways. And you need a little bit of pressure for the pad to be effective. So let me tell you what I'm doing here. You can think of the process as sanding, so a scraper would compare to a rough sandpaper. And it does the crudest job, but when you take increasingly finer sandpaper, in this case red pad and grey pad, to make the surface smoother. And here many would argue that you finish off with a cork, as it makes the surface extra smooth. I have a different theory though. I use the cork before the grey pad. I argue that it makes the surface too smooth. Think for a second that you drag your hand over a carpet, so that's equivalent to only scraping the board and not using the pads at all. You'll feel the friction and your hand will start to heat up, but then again the same thing will happen if you rub your hand against the glass. It's so smooth that the actual surface contact area is larger than as if you touch something slightly less smooth, for example silk. And you can read about this in literature by the way, it's not just my common sense. I hope it makes sense now why I leave a grey pad for last. I want to reintroduce a little bit of imperfection. Coming back to the cork, I haven't mentioned it yet but you need to do two passes. One while applying a little bit of pressure and one without. So the way it works is that when you rub your snowboard with pressure, you generate heat which softens the wax and it starts flowing into the aforementioned grooves. The second pass is quicker, you just spread the already softer wax evenly. Finally, I'll go through the same range of movements using the grey pad. I want to add those microscopic grooves from top to bottom of my snowboard. And if I do this right, they will trap air and water particles and help me glide over the snow. And with this, I'll conclude the tutorial. Hopefully not only did I give you good enough instructions of what to do, but also the reasons why. If you found any of this useful, please leave a like so that people after you know it's worth your while. And feel free to check my other stuff while you're at it. But most importantly, enjoy the snow the next time you're on it.